Hey guys, I just finished up putting away a thousand trees on our property, putting away, putting them in the dirt. Uh, with no specialized equipment other than a tractor, and I didn't use the tractor all that much. Uh, we'll show you just the red buds here. Maybe you guys can see them if you look out there through the pine trees everywhere in there. Not everywhere, but every so often. You'll see one little blaze orange twig. Here we go. Let me just come in closer so you can actually see. One little blaze orange twig. <coughs> so the red buds we put out all through the pine trees, um, you know, just randomly to grow in the understory. Everything else we put out in basically nursery beds in the garden. Tag along and I'll show you how. Okay, <clears throat> there's the first 50 in the ground. And I went in and started with the swamp white oak because again, you know, all I know about the swamp white oak is that it can tolerate wet feet better than a standard white oak. Um, I don't know how wet that is, uh, but this particular ground right here, <clears throat> it doesn't hold water, not like most of our property does. But there is a low spot right in there that I've just never been able to get to firm up. And every time I come in here and try to work in the dirt, it makes it worse and worse and worse. So I drove through it with the tractor a couple times and made deeper, deeper rut. Um, but I'm going to put all the swamp white oaks in that kind of little lower corner there just in case. All the rest of it, it kind of, it kind of crowns up a little hill right here and then it starts to slope back off that way. <clears throat> My voice is driving me nuts. I'm sorry, people. But all the rest of it, like I said, it kind of crowns up and over. So just this one, you know, inside, basically there's a row of blackberries there and it, it kind of is heaped up and that's the problem. It just kind of catches it and traps water right there, I guess. <clears throat> anyway, so the first uh, 50 swamp white oaks are in. They were in bundles of 25. You can see a lot of them are pretty good. Uh, there was a couple little ones in here. They, I mean, I expected all of them to be this size, you know. So I'm not upset about that one being small. It's one of the smallest ones. Um, but a lot of them are much, much bigger. So the first 50 are in. It took me about, I think, 30 minutes, give or take, to plant them. I started off trying to cut a row with a garden hoe, uh, but it wasn't deep enough. So I switched over to my spade, and I'm just using my spade just like a dibble bar, basically. Just stab it in, fold it over, uh, and drop the bare root down in behind it, and that's working pretty good. So just figured I'd mention that. First 50 in, I'm going to go ahead and try to get the other 50 now, I think, um, just because I'm after it. And uh, then I'll go inside and take a lunch, and we'll figure out how we want to do the rest. So we're working on getting the walnuts in. Um, we've gotten almost 75 of them done now, but I wanted to show you guys the walnuts I am extremely impressed with. Look at the roots on that guy. <laughs> I mean, that's just incredible. You know, not all of them are this good. This one's certainly the biggest one I've seen, so I had to brag a little bit. But, I mean, that's, that's just massive. To have that much root structure on a little seedling of this size, I, I can't even imagine what that would cost you like at a retail store where you buy them, you know, potted up in dirt. So anyway, just want to show it off. Just keep them busy. Well, we, <clears throat> we finished up the walnut and we finished up the silver maple. And now we're on to the shell bark hickory. And these are some interesting ones because these little seedlings have a little top on them and a massive root. <laughs> These things have a crazy tap root on them compared to what's up top. You know, they say half the tree's underground. These little things, I'm thinking over half of it, over more than half is underground, which is making it a little bit difficult to plant because I, I tilled this as deep as I could with the harrow right through here. And I went down an easy foot, I think, but it's taken all I can get out of this spade. I had to switch over to my big spade. My little tree spade, the blade on it's real flimsy and the, the deeper I go, the blade wants to actually bend instead of moving the dirt the blade tried to bend so i had to switch over to the bigger round nose spade um, and i'm having to drive it all the way down and that's about enough that i can get them just just deep enough just finishing up the nut all oak which is a red oak just going to show you guys the roots on these they're pretty good 
that's probably some of the best of them really they're not crazy big taproot like the hickory was which is good uh, and I've moved over into the second planting bed which is nice because I ran the harrow through it really well again or the cultivator got it tilled really deep and then with the shorter root they're going in super easy so that's helping me I'm really pounding along excuse me girl oh so I'm doing two per hole and again just using the spade just like a double bar I hold one in my mouth Let's see if I can move my hand around and show you guys lean the shovel out shove the little tree in here grab the other one in my mouth shove it in and then we just come back off of them with the shovel and I'll take a little bit I've been taking a little bit of this nice you know loose stuff on top and just shoving it in around them sorry that's gonna be a really shaky video make you guys seasick but you get the idea so I've got just a handful left there that'll finish out this little bit of the row yeah that'll finish out this little row and uh, we'll be done for tonight but that'll be 500 in the ground so we're half done okay I think I made the update for you guys before there's the not all oak and turns out I'm not very good at keeping straight rows here <laughs> you can see I curve in and back over a little bit there um, I don't know how I got that far out but whatever I was going fast so I've laid me a little board here today just as kind of a guide it doesn't really matter if these rows are straight or not but whatever I get a little OCD I guess all right, we're starting in now on the black gum, AKA Tupelo. And that's why we got them. <laughs> Stupid paper. <laughs> Can't get that paper to stay out. Um, I got them for the Tupelo more than the black gum. But I just wanted to show you guys the roots on these. These are pretty little trees. Uh, these are really what I expected everything to be, but you can still see they've got a good six inch root on them at least. So they'll plant real easy, but being smaller trees they plant a little bit easier like i said the hardest ones i've had so far the hickory um just had a massive massive thick tap root like my thumb but about a foot long that's all the hickory there and then the um the walnut just had a really really big you know fibrous root uh, which is good so it made it a little bit harder to plant but these will plant really easy with the shovel like a dibble bar so we're going to go ahead and get them done okay Black gums are in. The board worked really well to get me straightened back out. And again, like I said, straightness doesn't really matter, but I was afraid if I didn't do it that, you know, this next row would wander and the next and the next and the next and it would get really out of control and we'd end up wasting space. So I did waste a little wedge in there. Whether or not it's really considered wasted, I don't know, because it just means it's closer to that row and it's open over here, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, Osage Orange. These are some thorny little monsters. Oh, I forgot Osage Orange was thorny. I think as it gets bigger, maybe it's not as bad. Um, but for right now. <laughs> so these are going to be wearing leather gloves while I'm planting. Um, and it means my kids can't really help me because they don't have the gloves to hand me trees. So it'll be okay. I'll still knock it out here in about 30 minutes, I hope. We'll get busy. I guess I should mention the roots on the Osage Orange. Very, very nice. For bare root i'm holding my glove in my mouth by the way but i want to show you how bright that is that real bright color on that root that's about how the wood finishes out when you sand it down so that's why we like this tree because it's just a really really vivid orange a lot of people don't like it as much for you know furniture or uh cabinets because it's too vivid um, but it works excellent for you know more artwork sort of stuff uh you know gun stocks clock backings cutting boards stuff like that where it's a smaller piece and it's not it's not just too much in your face it's just too bright so anyway they, they're planting out real easy two at a time because they have a, a you know decent fibrous root but not a big branchy root so we'll get them in here all right got the osage orange done throwing little buggers now we're cracking into the black cherry which i'm not gonna lie i've been avoiding because <sighs> holy moly Look at those roots. These things are gonna be a beast to plant. Um, I'm just gonna have to get after it <laughs> and, and just see what I can even do because they are gonna be, I'm gonna have to dig a heck of a hole for every single one of them. They're gonna take me a while. The Osage Orange really only took me about 30 minutes to plant 100 trees, which is pretty quick, but these are sure gonna slow me down. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat on these black cherries. I wasn't about to try to spade every single one of those holes. 
So I went and put the plow on the tractor, middle buster, and cut me three ditches, which I've been doing 50 trees per row on all the other ones. But with these black cherries being as branchy as they are, I'm looking at basically 33 is my goal here. So I went and made three rows, and the way I spaced this out was cut the first row, and then to cut the second row, drop my tire into this track um, with how I got a, a decent spacing on it. And that leaves my heap up dirt in the middle loose. I wasn't running back over my heaped up dirt and I wasn't filling my old ditch back in. So that worked pretty good to cut the deep furrows. We'll see how well the trees set in here, but I'm just gonna go through and lay them in and try to pull this loose dirt in around them you know, as best I can. I think I've left enough space here between the Osage Orange and what'll be the first um, cherry. I can do at least one row, if not both rows of the cedars. The cedars are really small. Um, but I might just do one row. We'll just kind of see how they fit in there. Um, but anyway, that was my goal was to try to offset a little bit and leave that gap on purpose. Oh, and then the red buds will be the last thing to go, but the red buds we're just going to throw out here in the woods just at random, just wherever we find a spot, just dig a hole and plop them in just to add some beauty to the understory. So yeah, these are the last big hard ones. I think the cedars are going to be really small and going to be really easy, but anyway, just want to show you how I did the ditch here for these cherries. We'll see how well it works, I guess. Okay, black cherries in. Man, I like the way that looks. <laughs> that actually worked out really, really well. I kind of wish I had done that from the beginning. A lot of these other trees that I planted, you know, on a single row spacing, I could have cut a single trench um, and then just laid trees on either side of it. But with these, like I said, I put them, they're, they're still spaced about six to eight inches apart in the row um, but then the rows are about two feet apart which I don't know if that you know necessarily means anything but it gives good space for the roots to go sideways if they can break through this kind of harder packed soil but anyway I think I ended up getting about 40 to the row versus 33 because this last row ended up a little short not that it matters but that gets all of those done the only thing left to do is the cedars uh, and this actually only took me about 45 minutes. That includes the time I spent to go and actually hook up the plow. So probably only about 30 minutes worth of planting. So no worse than spading them all in. A uh, lot more work down on my hands and knees, obviously. But I like the way it looks a lot better. I mean, I don't know. These look fine, I guess. But it seemed like this was a lot easier. It was definitely a lot easier with those big root balls. I should have done that for sure for the hickory and the walnut, for sure. Everything else had pretty skinny roots and went pretty quick. But yeah anyway happy to have the black cherries in honestly those were those and the black walnuts were pretty much the brainchild of this whole operation to get started with we really wanted to have these species on our farm um amongst many others but those kind of got it all going so it's amazing that i didn't plant the black cherry first you'd think i wanted to but oh you know what it was i planted the swamp white oak first of everything because there's a low spot over there that's the whole reason i planted the swamp white oak first and then i just started grabbing bags so yeah cedar um i can probably fit the cedars all in here i should be able to spade all those i think they have a pretty pretty fibrous but pretty thin root they don't flare out a lot so i'll get the cedars i think all there in the middle and um yeah then just the red buds randomly out through the woods so yeah i'm tired it's lunchtime lunchtime and then cedars so here's our eastern red cedar those are beautiful <laughs> i mean I don't know if the camera does them justice for the color, but they're like a deep blue purple color. They're really pretty. The roots on them are like I expected. They're, the, the seedlings are a little prickly, so I'm actually going to put my gloves on to, to work with them just because they are kind of prickly. They're not thorny, but it's just kind of aggravating. The roots, they're not huge at all, so we'll be able to poke these in pretty quick and tight, I think. Um, but yeah, I just want to show you again, the root is every bit of half the tree anyway. Good quality root on it. Um, so we'll get spading and we'll be able to fit that's all 100 of them right there in that tiny little package we'll be able to fit them right here in this space between the cherries and the um and the osage orange just fine Daddy. all right the eastern red cedars are in they're they're just so pretty i'm so happy with those so that's it for the garden beds black cherry eastern red cedar osage orange um black gum here maple i think um no not all oak 
here. That's that red oak. <coughs> Shell bark hickory here. This is the silver maple. Silver maple here. Black walnut here. And our swamp white oak. Whoops, I'm stepping on one. Swamp white oak right there. Uh, so yeah, started off, I guess maybe a little generous because most of the smaller stuff I got 50 per row, 50-ish. The swamp white oak looks like I made three rows. The black walnut I made two and a half rows. It doesn't really matter. But it's all in. So the only thing left now is the red buds. And like I said, we're just going to take those out through the woods and just plant them just anywhere all along anywhere all along the edges basically and we might even wander out through the woods if it's kind of clear and just poke them in just wherever we want you know just to have that like i said have that spring color um a lot of them will probably get <laughs> broken and messed up in the future when we take pines down but whatever maybe we'll buy more next spring so anyway super excited about this had a lot of fun with the cedars because i had caroline out here and she's super adorable she's the cedars were a little prickly i ended up not using the gloves like i said but uh you know would stab the spade and i holler two and she was over here sorting through them all because the roots are real tangly. She'd run over and give me two, and then pretty much every time, ow, ow, ow. Hear her adorable little owls, most of the time because she bumped into the Osage orange and got prickled. But anyway, big undertaking, but realistically, I think one eight-hour day, I could have had all of it done. I spent an hour here and there, got them all in. Uh, lesson on the black cherry, because they had such big, bulky roots, uh, that get a lot of air in their bag the ones like the cedars and stuff that have real tight packed roots They were still real moist, but the the black cherry I'm happy I got in today because it was already starting to dry out a little bit and I haven't watered them I've had them now for Three or four days and I haven't watered them at all as far as watered the bag now They're in the soil the soil is moist and it's supposed to rain this afternoon and tomorrow So they should get a good watering in I'm gonna go get wood chips. Hopefully I have enough wood chips to mulch all this in 